Today I'm going to share some Tai Chi warm-ups, the Kuang Ping Yang form Tai Chi warm-ups as taught to me by YC Chiang. It's nice to begin with a little meditation or to end with some meditation and that can be just the Wu Qi, the standing each one, the universal post, many options. I'll share more with that in another segment. So we'll start with the first six of the basic 20 and I'll break it down into short segments. I'll give a little description. This is meant to be real time that the viewers can join along and practice. It's best not to talk when you're practicing to conserve the energy and avoid distraction. So, let's do it. Number one is a waist rotation. The body is relaxed, the feet are together. The mouth is closed. You can imagine a string lifting the head to the sky. The head is not meant to move around a lot. It's fixed like the feet. The movement is in the waist. The hands, not the thumb turned back, the thumb turned forward, palms covering the kidneys or lower back. And you do 30 or 40 or 50 each direction. Massaging the internal organs and reverse. You find your own speed. In the morning it might be quite slow, the range of motion might be less. If you're feeling tight, you stay relaxed. You work with what's relaxed and in the comfort zone. You can close the eyes for this. Just thinking about the lower abdomen, or if the eyes are open, looking far. Do not look down or up. It changes the alignment of the spine and the center line. So this warms up and softens and helps the circulation for the internal organs. And at least 30, 40 is the traditional number. Massage when you're done. You can massage this way, or you can massage for the fits. Bring some warmth and heat to the lower back and the kidneys. Number two, hip rotations. Just go the range of motion that's comfortable for you and the speed. If you're feeling a little tight or sticky or sore, you go slower and shorter range of motion. It should feel fluid and natural. 
the knees are a little bit more bent with the hip rotations. Do not lock the knees and feel the center of gravity or the Dantian lower a little bit. And then the opposite direction. If it were a clock on the ground, it would be counterclockwise now, starting out clockwise. Reverse counterclockwise. This one you can also close the eyes. Feeling the string lifting, the mouth closed, the body relaxed. And the hands on the hip between the pelvis and greater trochanter or in the pocket of the gluteus. Bringing the energy from the palm to the sides. And 30 or 40 or 50. Massage the sides, massage the abdomen. And you can tap the lower abdomen. Number three are the knee rotations. about the knee rotations. <clears throat> Stay aware of your knees. Take it easy. Stay in the comfort zone. These are safe if you do them correctly. So now I'm stretching the Achilles tendon. If this is difficult for you, do it on a little ledge so you don't roll back. I like this to stretch the lower back a little bit. This movement actually works the lower back quite a bit. You'll notice when you do the knee rotations. <clears throat> Another variation or preparation is to stretch the quadriceps. And that's important to protect the knees, to help the tracking of the kneecap. Not only do we stretch the back of the legs, we stretch the front. So this is one way to do it. Help yourself up. And massage the knees, the inside, the front, outside, and the back. You cup the kneecaps gently, you're not putting weight through the arms, you're just cupping with the energy of the hands. And then shallow. And then the other way. Nine or ten. Okay. And then when you're ready, if you're able, you can go deeper. Just a note of instruction or advice. The feet aren't glued to the floor. They're mobile, they're flexible, they're alive, and it's full contact. The heels can come up a little bit and they track. So as I'm doing these rotations, my feet are moving. My back and my pelvis are moving. And you can see my whole body is lifting up as I do that and massaging. It's not feeling right, don't do it. As with all of these exercises, unless you are a doctor, you probably should talk to your doctor about if these are appropriate for you.
there's a conception that the knee only moves as a hinge and that's generally true although the body is a little more complicated and magnificent in its capacities to do phenomenal things so a little lateral movement integrated with the other joints it's okay it helps the circulation and mobility as well as proprioceptive awareness okay number four is the back stretch feet together The idea is not to pinch the back, but to elongate when you do the arching. You might try first with just the McKenzie stretch where you're holding the lower back and feeling the spine lengthen out this way. And massaging. When I do the arch, I do the arm press and the arch over. And you ought to be able to breathe, maybe not fully, but naturally. Don't hold your breath. Go to the range of motion that you feel a comfortable stretch. And then you can go further. Traditional count, 10 times. Five or eight is okay. A little more of a stretch. You can arch over a little further or do whatever they call that, the bridge in gymnastics and the handspring if you're in the mood. Okay, number five is the side to side stretch. You can start by massaging the sides and then three levels. This is the shallow and the body is flat. That is, I'm just moving side to side with, without a twist. Then, second level, you do twist and come down to about the knee level. Coming up. You can see the feet are still together. Well, five times medium level and then five or ten times more deep. Point of advice, this is this is a twisting exercise. Don't twist so much from the spine but from the hips and the waist. Keep the strength working through the legs. Feel the ground path through the legs as you go down and use the legs to bring you up. And we'll do a few more. Just staying in your comfort zone. And then a fine hole and then a stretch. Twist. And fine hole. Twist.
and that's number five. Number six is the arm press. Fingers interlaced, pressing down up to about chin or forehead level. Many clothes on. Good. So those are the warm ups number one through six with Quan Ping Yang. And that's perhaps a place to stop if you just want to do a quick morning work, workout, warm up, or in the evening. When you practice, it's okay to do some walking. That move is to kick the Achilles tendon, it's a conditioning. Don't do it too hard, but you can actually strike the, the lower calf or Achilles tendon pretty hard with no problem. So now we'll continue the Quan Ping Yang warm-ups number seven. These are front stretches, and now we're concentrating on the legs. It's a forward stretch. Start out stretching the tendons in the hands. And then we're going to concentrate on the hamstring. Stand up occasionally, massaging the legs, and also a slap. This is traditionally done very early in the morning, so warming up, warming up, warming up. With massage and risk activity is good. But being mindful and emphasizing the internal. Now, forearms. And then hold.
tuned in. Jeans are tight. Excuses, excuses. One bit of advice about the bouncing that's called ballistic stretching, and according to some, it is a no no. It is, however, now the Wushu and the Qigong masters get fantastically flexible starting at a very early age. So if it's done with awareness, you keep massaging the muscles and tendons, you have a good alignment, I'll defend it as relatively safe, but you have to know your limits. And this is the traditional Kwan Ping Yang warm-ups that I'm sharing with you today. The other one with the feet turned out, Also part of the moment practice. Although I tend to skip it, but not today. Number 11 is chin to toe. So with this one, the weight is on the hind leg initially, and the front foot toe is pointed up. A big part of this stretch is not just the hamstring, but the calf, the Achilles tendon, and the foot. And what people will do is actually find a board or a block on which they can stretch. So here you're putting some pressure through the leg, through the foot, and really pushing the heel down, stretching. Most Americans are extremely tight in the ankle and tendon such that if they squat down, they'll fall over, they'll roll back. They have no flexibility here. So this is important to stretch. And it prepares for the chin to toe practice. You can alternate the depths going deeper and deeper on each side, or you can emphasize one side going deeper and deeper on that one side. So starting with the right side, just with 10 fingers. Leg straight, knee almost locked, toe pointed up, weight over in the front, and the head comes down. up and massage. Massage so the knee, ankle, and then six fingers deeper. Massage. Again slap, bring some circulation. Stretching the Achilles tendon, the foot, and then with one finger, each hand. Step 
is a hold, grabbing a foot, and stretching. Can be two feet away or one feet, get the elbow, the fist, with the forehead. It's all okay within your range and comfort zone. Don't overdo it. You can injure yourself if you push too hard. And then the other side. Come up, use the strength of the hind leg, don't overwork the back. Massage the knee, whole leg, stretch the foot, and then on one finger. Come over, good stretch. Hold. That's number 11, chin to toe, is the name of the move. Whether you ever accomplish that is another question, but emphasizing stretching the legs, circulation for the legs. Remember, children can do that when they're a month old. They can hold their foot over their head, and that's the idea. Just lengthening the tendons and muscles so it's more like a soft baby. Here I'm stretching the quadriceps on the right side more than anything for myself, although I'm starting to stretch the hip and the hamstrings. This is number 12, or what I do is number 12, and then I go into the splits. You can't do that, or even if you can, it's still good to massage. This is the muscle group that gets the most stretching. So massage the hamstrings on the front leg. Settling into that if you can, relaxing, letting the muscles soften, don't resist. Stay in the comfort zone. Maybe a little bit uncomfortable, but should not be any sharp pain. Come back to a Cesar.
So I do one side, then I repeat on the other side. You can skip all this if you want, but it's good for focus, and for me it's important because I need to stretch my quadriceps. They tend to get really tight if I take even a few days off. Pants are not that agreeable. Just somewhere or another, getting a little bit deeper, stretching a little bit more. And then the Stretch for the adductors. I'm trying to stretch from the pelvis and not to put too much strain on the lower back. Warm-ups. And that's number 12. 